Right, this thing uh, turned up on, a, on an auction site, um, eBay in fact. I think it's a really interesting air cord transformer. Uh, so I thought I need to try and get this. this is kind of encapsulated in resin, uh, but it's an air cord transformer. Did have a, a, a vacuum tube or valve uh, driving it. Uh, unfortunately, the um, journey through the uh, post didn't really help it any. It got destroyed. Um, so it's been a it looks like somebody's project actually built with a little chassis um it's kind of sad in a way because it probably looks like it's somebody's garage clearance or worse still house clearance and it came with another part as well the other item wasn't uh, described but it's a similar arrangement it has similarly got an air cord transformer here uh, this one's more kind of typical of what you would see in very early, early uh, televisions um, uh, with a valve base on it. I had a look at this circuit and kind of reverse engineered both of them. This one looked from the pinouts used that it would work with uh, an audio tube. So it looks like it was made to work with the EL34, uh, which I have one of. So I did try it uh, and it did kind of work. But it didn't seem tunable. It was a little bit strange. It runs at a very high frequency. It runs at four, over 400 kilohertz, which seems a little fast for the, the valve and also a little fast for the, the coil arrangement. So it seems to be a kind of parasitic thing. And it doesn't, nothing, just the capacitor doesn't make any difference to it. So I need to have a really have another look at that one. Um, similarly, this one, well, this one suffered because the, the valve got destroyed. So this uh, little tube was a, a 6B slash 25, sorry, 254M. Um, they destroyed, did look into it. It's a little, it was used as a small transmitter tube. It had an anode cap at the top. The, um, from what I've read on it, it's not a particularly brilliant uh, tube anyway. And it's probably pretty similar to um, something else I can use. Uh, I took it apart though out of interest just to see the construction so you can make out the cathode is actually looks as though it's <laughs> unless it was just the vacuum failing a lot of the oxide has actually come off of the cathode um, so it's probably not been a great in great condition anyway uh, these are the uh, beam forming forming plates this is a beam triode so anyway that tubes had it. So I kind of reverse engineered and drew this circuit up. This is what was in the uh, in the, the actual chassis. It did look incomplete and what they're doing here is they're using the coil, the, the secondary as a as a resonance coil. They're not using the primary. There are the two coils in that uh, transformer but they have only connected to one. Um, so I'm not sure that it would be a great way of working it anyway so my intention was to use the primary coil as it was intended and this smaller circuit let's see it does seem to work but it does oscillate at a very strange frequency um, and this circuit this tuning part doesn't seem to be right at all and if I change the capacitor it either runs at this very high frequency or you try and adjust it to have a matching capacitor for around about the 60 kilohertz which seems to be more the tuned frequency for that coil it just stops working so it, it seems like a parasitic thing that's going on um, although it's got you know driver a, a neon tube or something anyway so let's have a go at playing with some of these this is the air cord transformer from the that was on the chassis. I've taken it out and I've wired it up with some of the old components as well. So some nice old resistors and things in there. And I've also added this this vacuum tube here. This one I had used the um, this one, which is an old black and white TV line output tube. Uh, this works really well. PL uh, five hundred four, I think it is. Uh, but uh, I decided to. This is slightly newer. This one. Uh, it's also a beam triode, um, slightly larger, but so I can tr try driving with this. This works okay. Let me just put a, a neon lamp there just to indicate. So you can see already ionizes quite nicely. It's a reasonably low voltage as well. 
if I see what sort of voltage. It's not really a huge voltage. Oh, there we go. See the spark. Uh, but that's about half mains voltage on it. So it could do a lot higher. But wouldn't want to cause breakdown inside the, the coil. There's it on a plasma globe quite nicely. That's a little bit higher voltage on there. But And, but uh, it, also, it also lights anything, ionise anything nearby. What was interesting with some of these old uh, gas tubes I, I'd made, these ones have got various gases in them, but no electrodes, they're just bits of neon uh, tubing. And as you can see, these, uh, these ionise or light up quite nicely. This one's got iodine in it, so you can sometimes just make out so there's a a double path in there. Uh, the iodine does that. Uh, this one's got more neon in there. Uh, really okay. This looks like looks like argon. So there's another argon one. Not great. This one's got some fluorescent uh, powder inside, and it lights up like a small fluorescent tube. Except you can see the the discharge as well, the argon on that one. Uh, this is just a small fluorescent tube itself. Uh, what I've got here, yeah, more neon in that one, Very nice. And uh, another one with some iodine in it. The um, I like the the iodine in them because it gives you a kind of split uh, discharge, where you get two different paths inside the the tube. That's just a magnet here diverting it slightly. So yeah, there's some, another one actually. It's also got a bit of iodine in it. Anyway, just thought that would be interesting to see. Uh, always nice to try it with neon. This is um, helium in this tube. This one has electrodes, but I'm not connecting them to anything. So this is the other little coil, high voltage coil here, using uh, the, the audio tube here, and you can see it works very similarly. 